These are the top five DIY mechanical keyboard kits under 100 bucks. If at any point during the video you want to check out any of the five keyboards in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into the number five spot. And that is the Echo ACR. These things come in at 85 to 90 bucks, so pretty high up on that budget. However, these things are really awesome. Now, this is just one form factor. They basically come in any form factor that you want. 60%, 65, a few different 65. 75 TKL less than 60%. They have a ton of different form factors. So that's the first thing. Now this is a really good kit, but why it's at the place of number five is well, just because it's hard to get. This thing is out of stock most of the time. You can find it as a pre-built, which is a really good deal. And that has Akko's own switches and keycaps with it. However, finding it as a DIY kit like this one was is pretty rare. So that's why it's at number five. All the others you can get like all the time in stock. Now these have plate mounted stabilizers. Uh, which do come pre-tuned and lubed. Not my favorite. I don't like when DIY kits come pre-lubed with their stabilizers. It's like, obviously I wanna do that myself. However, these come pretty well. They're not perfect, but you could probably just tune up like the wires with some dielectric grease and be good to go. Now this obviously does have RGB. It has case RGB as well as per key lighting on each one of those keys, but they are north facing LEDs. So you will have interference on some switches, not all switches, but on some switches with cherry profile keycaps. But if you're not using cherry profile keycaps, don't worry about it. It's not gonna be a big deal at all. All right, now as far as the plate, some of them come with metal plates, but most of them come with polycarbonate plates like this one, which I absolutely love. As far as colorways, these come in four different colors. This kind of translucent color right here, and then a smoky version of this, which is basically like a blacked out version, but it's still see-through and transparent, then a blue and a pink. My favorite is probably the translucent or probably the black, the smoky black is cool. Now this is a gasket mounted board. So there is actual gaskets on here and you can even see them right here. They are pretty large gaskets right there. There's not a ton of flex. As you can see, there's not a ton of flex at all. However, it still helps with the overall feel and the linearity of sound and feel throughout the board. And that's really what gaskets are there for, not to just bounce around like a lot of these reviewers think. I don't know what's up with that. As for dampening, this comes with no case dampening in the back. However, it does come with an EVA foam plate and PCB foam uh, between the plate and the PCB. It's kind of a weird way to say it, but yeah, so it does come with that. So you're gonna probably put the case foam in yourself or you don't need any with this because it is so close to the case. I didn't for this build, I didn't put any in it and having the polycarbonate uh, like build of this kind of is a different sound, which is really cool. So you don't necessarily need dampening in the case. But now for ease of building slash modding, how easy is this? Well, to get into the back of this thing, there's screws on the back and some of the different sizes are more difficult or just different, but these are really high quality, like nice screws. Some of them aren't. However, this is really easy to get into the case. It's really easy to get out and mod it open it up quickly, tune things, change things around. This one's super easy to do that. So as far as beginner friendly, this one is quite beginner friendly. Now, as far as sound, I think these sound really cool and unique. However, on this build, I basically didn't mod it much at all. I left the stabilizers in stock form. I put on lubed Akko jelly pink switches. And then I think I literally did nothing else to it. However, stabilizers need some work, but this will give you a good idea of what you could get right from the factory. So take a listen to the sound test. This is how it sounds. The keys sound insanely good for being stock. Literally just lube switches and that's it. This thing sounds awesome in stock form. But moving on to the number four spot, this is the Fiker IK75. Now this is a 75% form factor with that volume knob. This is probably the most popular form factor for custom keyboards. Now, as far as stabilizers, this again comes with plate mounted stabilizers that are tuned and lubed from the factory, but these ones aren't the best tuned. They were good and acceptable, but if you're like an enthusiast, you're gonna wanna re-lube these. However, for this specific build, I put in my own custom stabilizers from Aseni. Now for RGB, it's a similar story. It has case lighting on the back, as you can see right here, and then it has per key lighting for each key. However, these do have north facing LEDs not south facing LEDs. So again, if you're using Cherry Profile keycaps, you may have some interference here. As far as the plate, this comes with a thick ass piece of metal for the plate. This thing is super thick and really industrial looking. It's very cool. However, it also comes with a polycarbonate plate. 
which is fantastic. That actually like surprised the heck out of me that it came with a polycarbonate plate right in the box, but that's really cool. If you want a more creamy build for your IK75, use that polycarbonate plate um, and it's gonna sound really nice. However, both plate options are fantastic and you get that choice right in the box, which is cool. Now, as far as colorways, you have it in this translucent white and then you can also get it in a smoky black or sometimes you can even find it in blue. Although I don't really like the blue, but sometimes you can find it in blue. However, the translucent white and the smoky black look really cool. Now, this board is technically gasket mounted. The gaskets are very different from any other gasket uh, and they're pretty small and very tough. That being said, this still helps with sound consistency and feeling as well as making it really easy to mod this board because there's no standoffs in the bottom. The case is really easy to just lay a piece of felt or foam or EVA foam or rubber or silicone pouring, whatever you want. It's easy to do because there's no standoffs in the back of this. And also because the gasket is actually made of rubber rather than a foam, this is actually better with like vibrations and stuff like that. Uh, it just helps with that. And it's overall a clean feeling and sounding board. All right, now for dampening, this actually does quite well if you like a lot of dampening. Now again, you can take this out, but it has case foam. Then it has foam on the back of your PCB. So they're kind of sandwiched together there. And then you have plate and PCB foam in the middle of those two. And those are all EVA foam. They're nice quality, they're good quality. I kept the ones in the case and the back of the PCB, took out the plate and PCB foam and added some PE foam. At least I think I did. I think that's what I did for this build. All right, now for ease of building, the only tough part about this case is getting this part open. So because number one, it's a gasket mount, and number two, it's a pop-off case. So basically this section right here pops off, and then that's what holds the whole case together. So because of that, once you get this piece off, it's insanely easy to mod. The other pro to that is you can keep the keycaps on while you undo this, which is something that on most keyboards that have standoffs, you have to take the keycaps off to get inside the board. So that makes it really easy. However, this is a little bit harder to get off. It's kind of in the middle. So I would say this is kind of like the middle ground for getting this off, but once it's off, super easy to mod. Now, like you can obviously see, this does have a knob right here. Now the wiggle, you can see there's a little bit of wiggle. It's not the most amount of wiggle I've ever seen. So it's definitely manageable. That being said, the actual knob itself, which is on there pretty tight, is a metal outside and it does look nice, but then the inside is plastic. It doesn't feel the most premium, but it also doesn't feel cheap. So kind of in the middle again there. However, this knob can be replaced super easily. There's like other guitar knobs that fit on this, uh, stuff like that. So they're pretty easy to find. Now, as you can see, because this is glowing up, this is wireless. And one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that I love about this keyboard is that it has two batteries inside of it. If you see in the back right here, you can literally see the two batteries. And if you know anything about keyboard batteries, these things are big by themselves. Each one of these is 4,000 milliamps doing a combined of eight, thousand milliamps. This thing lasts for an insane amount of time. So it not only has Bluetooth and you can use it with that USB-C right there, but it has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. That's what I use most of the time because I game a lot. So you can game with this keyboard, which is fantastic. And that battery life is insanely long. I actually use this on one of my setups as the daily driver for that setup. And you basically like never have to charge this thing. It's pretty much insane. This thing lasts forever. And that was a huge pro with me. It was reliable and it lasted forever. That's a big deal for me. Now, as for the sound, this case sounds pretty dang good. I do think this is a slightly louder case, which I do like. So if you did wanna make it more quiet, you'd have to put thicker stuff in the back of this, which is not a problem at all. This is a very solid case. But do note that on mine, these are factory lubed switches. So they do sound a little bit scratchy. Just note that that isn't the case or the board. It's just the switches. But take a listen to the sound test. This is how the Fikur IK75 sounds. Take a listen. I absolutely love it, but let's move on to the number three spot, which is the Tester 68. Now this comes in at under 30 freaking bucks. This makes it one of the best keyboards to start modding with because it isn't necessarily the easiest out there, but it's super freaking cheap. I mean, I got this one for 26 bucks, including shipping and tax. Sometimes I see them for like 13 bucks, but then it's like 15 bucks for shipping. So super affordable. Now, obviously by the name, it is a 65% form factor. So you have basically what you have on a 60% and then you have those keys over there and for your navigation keys right here. Now this does come with plate mounted stabilizers. However, they are not lubed from the factory, which is fantastic, which means you can start from scratch, lube them yourself, 
absolutely fantastic. That's what it should be. After spending very little time lubing these, they sounded quite good. They're not absolutely insane, but they're pretty dang good for being a $26 keyboard and not spending that much time tuning these. That's quite good. All right, now for RGB, this does not have RGB. However, the switches are still facing north, but they don't have any RGB. There's no RGB here. I don't mind that because I'm not using Shine through keycaps. As for the plate, this has no polycarbonate plate, just a metal plate. So solid metal, it feels really good. It's strong, really no complaints there. And we expect that for the price. As for the colorways from the place that I got it, you can get it in white and that's it. But I have seen some other listings. There's a ton of different ones of these that I've seen in like blue and black and some other colors. But from the place that I got it, I can't speak about what they use and if it's different. So for the one that I'm gonna link below, which is the exact same one that I got, you can get it in white. However, this would be an incredibly easy case to spray paint. So keep that in mind. All right, now for mounting, this uses typical standoffs and I know big deal. If you hear any reviewers say typical standoffs, it's like a red flag. If it's not gasket mounted in this day and age, it's crap, which is absolutely BS. Okay. In this day and age with everyone wanting gasket mounted boards, gasket mounted boards are not better. They are cool, but they're different. They're not better, but everyone acts like they are, but you're going to hear the sound test in a second. You can see that these, even with standoffs, Sounds really freaking good. So definitely don't shy away from a board like this just because it has standoffs. All right, now as far as dampening, this does not have any case foam, but it does come with a freaking silicone PCB plate dampener. Insane, super high quality one, it's super thick, takes up the full space, fantastic for dampening. Like if you wanna make a quiet gaming keyboard, this is where it's at. That is so cool to get in the box. Okay, but what about ease of building? How easy is this case to build? And number one, it's gonna be harder because you have those standoffs you have to cut out all the case dampening around the standoff. Same thing with the tape mod, stuff like that. So it does make it more complicated. But the other side of that is it's so cheap that you're probably not gonna be worried about messing it up because it's, it's so freaking cheap. But I would say this is probably the second hardest keyword to mod on this list, but again, it's a challenge and it's fun. Don't shy away from this because I said that. All right, and this is wireless. And you're like, wireless? And that cheap of a keyboard? Well, it's only wireless. As you can see, there's no, there's no ports anywhere. It is just wireless which uses two AAA batteries and you can connect it via Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, which is really reliable. You can absolutely game on this thing. It's super reliable, which is kind of crazy. The other thing is that the AAAs are kind of a pro and a con. It's a con because you have to put AAAs in it, but it's a pro because you're never gonna run out of battery power. You just get more batteries. I personally use these. They're like some triple A batteries that are rechargeable from Amazon. They're like the Amazon basic ones or whatever. I just use those so that I don't have to throw anything away, put stuff in the landfill. I use rechargeables on this and it works perfectly. But take a listen to the sound test of the Tester 68. Take a listen. Oh yeah, for such a cheap keyboard, this is super fun to play around with changing up the different sounds and a great keyboard to mod. One that you absolutely need to mod once in your life. But moving on to the number two spot, this is the TM680. Coming in at 60 to 70 bucks, this is an extremely popular and very solid option. Now, this is a 65% form factor with those arrow keys over there and you get a volume knob, which is super cool. And I mean, look at it. It looks really freaking cool. I also put super nice keycaps on here, but that's besides the point. Now for the stabilizers, these are again, plate mounted stabilizers, but like the Tester 68, they come completely unlubed, which is fantastic. So you can lube them yourself. And honestly, after holy modding them and lubing them, they sound really freaking good. So that's impressive. All right, now for RGB, this has quite a bit of it. It has per key lighting on all of the keys, and then it has RGB right here. And then on the left side, on the right side, and then in a ring around the volume wheel right there. So there's quite a bit of RGB. Now this is north facing LEDs again. So again, if you're gonna use cherry profile keycaps, you might have some interference. Now for the plate, this is a metal plate. I do wish that it came with a polycarbonate plate. However, I still made this thing sound fantastic with a metal one. So again, don't shy away from that. This is a super solid option. Now for dampening, there is no case foam in the back of here. There is plate and PCB foam. I think it's EVA foam between the plate and the PCB. So there is that, but again, no foam back here in the case. Now for mounting, this uses a two piece plastic shell. As you can see, this is actually one piece 
and then this is another piece, and then it uses screw-in standoffs. And even with that, this still can sound really, really good. Like this can sound really freaking good. However, now let's talk about ease of building this thing. Not the easiest. I think this is probably the number one hardest on the list because number one, you have the standoffs, and number two, you have this, which is kind of hard to get apart. So to get the two piece case apart, it is harder to get apart. I think I broke a piece back here, although it didn't seem to make too much of a difference or it was back here actually, it was back there. So the two pieces hard to get apart and then you have the standoffs that you have to worry about in the case as well as just unscrewing them. So this is probably the hardest one to build, but it also can sound really, really good. And it's very solid. Like this is a solid board. Now for connectivity, this uses a USB-C over there on the left side. However, you can get wireless versions of this with big batteries in it for actually not much more than this. Gamma K actually makes a good one that I have, although I don't think it's a DIY kit or maybe it is. I'll also link that one below to Amazon. So you can check that one out as well if you want a wireless version of this. But the sound, take a listen to my build of the TM680, take a listen. Absolutely epic, but moving on to the number one spot, this is the MK870. Coming in at 80 bucks, you get a ton for your money. Now this is a TKO form factor, so if you want good functionality, as well as it just looking awesome, cause TKOs look so cool, then a TKO is great, cause it has the functionality as well as the awesome look. All right, now this comes with plate mounted stabilizers that are pre-tuned. That being said, they were damn near perfect when they came in. So I kind of like don't wanna pass it, but I also pass it because many of you, unless you're a really big enthusiast, you may get this board and not tune the stabilizers. However, something really special with this board is that you can not only use plate mounted stabilizers that come with this board, but you can put in PCB mounted screw in stabilizers, which is insane. So if you wanna get your own plate mounted stabilizers and put them in this board, you absolutely can do that. Now for RGB, this does have perky lighting on the keys. I don't think it has any case lighting. Uh, however, the cool thing is, this is south facing LEDs. So no interference, even if you're using cherry profile keycaps, that's fantastic. You got the screw and stabs and south facing LEDs. Now for the plate, it is a quite rigid metal plate. However, I have heard that you can get polycarbonate plates and brass plates separately for this thing. I did hear that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure you can. Now for the color, you can either get this in this translucent black, kind of smoky color like I have here, or you can get it in translucent pink. Not just full translucent, but get it in the black or the pink. Interesting. All right, for mounting, this does use standoffs, but the standoffs aren't super intrusive and they don't have a lot of them. Like there just aren't a lot of standoffs. So it is really good that way. Now, this is also a two-piece plastic case. This is the easiest case to get apart on the list for sure. It is so easy, but it's also really solid when it's together. Now for dampening, there's no dampening in the case, but there is silicon in the plate and the PCB, which is absolutely fantastic. You guys know I love silicon. If you want a lot of dampening, silicon's fantastic for that. And that's something that you really can't get afterwards. And you can't really make it yourself. So it's fantastic they include that if you want a ton of dampening. I don't think I have it in this build. I took it out and actually used it on a different build. But the fact that they include it is fantastic. Now, as far as ease of building, this is probably the easiest because this piece comes off so easily and without having to break anything, which is fantastic. And you can keep most of the keycaps and switches on. There's just a few screws and you can actually see them between the keys. So that's not too big of a deal. The standoffs are there, but they're really easy to get around and there's only a few of them but when putting this back together you just screw in a couple standoffs and then you snap it all back together and it i don't know it just works really well it was designed nicely and also the case itself is very strong and rigid as for connectivity it is just wired but it has a USB-C on this side on the back and then one over here and then one on the other side as well so it has three usb type c's i don't know but i dig it but take a listen to my build with tactiles take a listen And that is how it sounds. I absolutely love this board. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five keyboards in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. Any of these boards would be absolutely fantastic. And I've thoroughly enjoyed modding all five of them. Although my favorite to mod is definitely this one. That's why it's number one. 
I love this board. It also looks so good. Yes. All right, but this is a consumer jacket review and I'll see you guys in the next video.